In the last video, you saw that we were working on putting up the beadboard, but we actually had to stop because we realized that we never did put up the lights that were above the kitchen sink, and then I needed to figure out the ones for the stove. So this evening, my dad finally got a chance, and if you guys don't know, he's an electrician, so he's the one that wired our house for us and stuff, and he's the one that does all the wiring. Ben knows how to like change out light fixtures and stuff, but we leave all the major wiring to him. That way we know it's done correctly. So he's going to come and hook those up for us this evening, and then I'm not sure how long it'll take him because while my parents are here we like to talk and catch up with them they live like an hour and a half away so we it's more so a visit and a little bit of work but that's totally fine with us we don't get to hang any more of the beadboard today then we'll just work on hanging it tomorrow. okay so these are the lights that i plan on putting in the kitchen i bought them like forever ago like it was last summer so not this past summer but the summer before it was whenever we were living with my parents and you're either gonna love these lights or hate them. Everybody like either loves them or hates them. And me and Ben have talked about it. And I guess like I'm the only one that really has to like them and Ben. And we do like them. We wanted to go with something different in the kitchen just because schoolhouse lights are so popular in the kitchen and during that time period of like whenever we believe the house was built and stuff. But we wanted something completely different because it seems like everybody just puts back the schoolhouse top lights in their kitchen or in the whole house, honestly. And two of the lots that were originally in the house, they're sort of like schoolhouse lots. So we're already gonna have them in the entryway. So we wanted to break it up throughout the house and have different lot fixtures. We think this one is gonna hang over top of the island and it has like these, those that attach to the bottom of it. It's like, it's a lot prettier whenever it's up and hanging. And then these, I'm not, and all of this could change. Like, I'm not sure if this is what I'm gonna go with, but this is what I have for now. And this is what I plan on putting up and what will be going up unless I just find something else that I absolutely love. But these right here, they're probably going to hang on either side of the stove. Like, not on the brick, but on the sides of the brick, if that makes sense. And then this light fixture, we were looking for it for days here. Like, me and Ben, we tore this place apart looking for the light fixture. Could not find it. I called my mom because I was making sure I didn't leave it there. And my dad was like, well, I have a light fixture out in the building. And it was that. So I don't know how it got out in his building, but he's supposed to be bringing it today. So hopefully everything is there. I have the attachment pieces and everything, but not the actual light fixture. And I know I'll get asked and I'm not sure if these exactly fit the time period of the home. I am I know that the glass and the light fixtures, they're older than the 60s because I did the milk glass test, which is just like where you hold it up to the sun or light. And if it creates the ring of fire, they call it like the red glow off the edge then it's older than the 60s. So I know it's older than the 60s, but it seemed to be most popular during the 30s. I really have no idea and I don't know like anything really about these lots. I just bought them off of eBay forever ago. But I knew that I liked them. That's all I knew. But for now, these are the lights that will be going up in the kitchen. And if you don't follow me on the Instagram, then you've probably not seen this, but this piece we thought about putting in the kitchen. It's an old store cabinet from our town here. It actually doesn't really fit the space, so we're gonna restore it and put it somewhere else in the house, but it's not gonna go in the kitchen, it'll go somewhere else. Okay, so if you've been watching the earlier vlogs, like the past two vlogs, you know about this door already. It's gonna be our kitchen door, but I put paint stripper just on the detail areas of the door, so it darkened it. So now I'm trying to get that off, and this right here is not the paint remover. This did not cause it. If you can tell, it's the natural wood grain. So that's why it looks like that. So I put two coats of wood bleach on each side, and then I cleaned it off with water really well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and sand it with, I think that's 100 grit, and then I'll probably go in with like an even higher grit after that to make it a little bit smoother.
Okay, so we were working on hanging the beadboard and I randomly just looked up and noticed that this light last night was not center. So we kind of quit and we were trying to figure out why it was off center. And I remember now it's because of the kitchen island. I wanted the light fixture to be center over top of the kitchen island because even the brick and this, if we, and the back door, if we were to put it center with those, they're not center. So it would be off. Like you have to choose one thing to make it center with. And I chose the, the kitchen island. So we laid out these boards and stuff to kind of give an idea of what everything is going to look so like. So what we have laid out here so far is like, here's the doorway from the dining room into the kitchen. And it's still really messy. We're still working in here. But right here would be all cabinets and it's sticking out like how far it would go. So it would run all the way to this furthest edge. We're not sure if we're going to put something right here because the stove is going to sit in front of the brick. And then we're not sure if we're going to put a cabinet here or just leave this open space to allow for more walking room. But under here will be the kitchen sink. The fridge will go in this corner. The L right here, that is where the cabinetry will go. We're not really sure if we'll use like freestanding like hutches or what yet. I still have not decided. But and then it'll go to the stove. And then over in this corner, this blue board, it'll go back against the wall a little bit further, but that is where the corner pantry will be. So it'll probably run like right here, but we just laid that out a little bit further just to show. And plus we didn't want to move all that stuff. So it will sit closer to the wall, more inset, but this is where the pantry will be. So it'll be like a wall and a door right here. And it'll be like at an angle. The back door, we're talking about that right now. His dad is going to come help us Monday to install the new back door, the one that I'm working on right now. So I kind of messed up and we didn't, I changed the door like last minute. So now we have to try and close this in and we're hoping that trim can cover. We're going to put a really thick trim, which it had thick trim around it to begin with, but we're going to put an even thicker trim probably to try and help hide the, that we did the, that we did it backwards because we should have framed in the door before, but I changed the door last minute. And so now the walls needed to like close in if that makes sense. So we have to do it about two inches, but that was probably like our biggest mistake that we made in this kitchen was I was indecisive and chose the door after we had already put up the walls. And then this right here represents the kitchen island, which is going to be center of this light. And what we've decided to do is take this door and make it swing out into the mudroom just because we need this to be open as possible just because this is the main walking way. This is how we're going to come into the house and it's going to be our main entrance. So as soon as you walk in, the door is going to swing out into the mudroom instead of coming into the kitchen just to allow for more walking room. And so it doesn't feel like you're closed in as much right here by this kitchen island. But the kitchen island will be on wheels, so we can move it over here next to the pantry whenever I need it out of the way, or move it to the dining room, which is just right around the corner. But I know our kitchen layout has been so confusing to a lot of you guys, and hopefully this helps to kind of show and represent like what everything will be. And to everybody saying that we need a bigger kitchen island, we do not need a bigger kitchen island. If anything, this one is going to be a little bit too But that is how we've had to rearrange things and make everything work just to try. Because we didn't want to knock down walls. We wanted to leave the house as original as possible without having to come in and knock down this wall. Because we did consider knocking down this wall and making the kitchen and dining room like kind of like one. But ultimately decided not to just because it was never intended to be like that. And we wanted to leave the house as original as possible. That is our goal. And we do not want to come in and like knock down a bunch of walls. And this house was not meant for an open floor plan. So we want to keep it that way and just each room be its own. We've kind of had to sacrifice a little bit of kitchen space, but I think it's going to work. And I feel like I'm going to love it in the end. It's just getting it to that point and trying to see it and envision it before it's done.
So it is obviously much later in the evening, but I never did show you guys that we got the ceiling finished. So it is completely finished except for these boards right here. They need to be ripped and it's like, it's not even a one full bead. So it needs to be ripped pretty small. We didn't small. get to work on the lower half of the vertical boards just because we're running into issues with it because whenever we lay the new floors on top of these, it's gonna raise it about three quarters of an inch. And that's whenever we come into problems with these baseboards because if you can tell, they're not even put on correctly. Like these boards are sitting directly on top of these, not the baseboard isn't over top of that, if that makes sense. So all of these need to be replaced anyways, because that is an actual stove outlet. And then there's a pipe hanging out and then there's a pipe right there. And over here in this corner, there's actually a dryer vent because they used to have a washer and dryer sitting here. So what we're gonna do is because there is plaster behind this, we didn't leave it on these parts of the walls. We took it off before we realized. What we have to do now to make the new boards stick out just as far as these, we're gonna put two one by fours horizontally, one here and one here so that we can nail to it. And that way it'll stick out the same as these and it can flow and then we'll put our chair rail on top. And then what we're gonna do to put the baseboards on correctly is this has got to go because it, it's gonna cause issues with the floor if not. So what we're gonna do is remove these baseboards right here and we're gonna put a one before behind it so that we can nail to it and then put a bigger piece of trim over top so that it'll like, so it'll essentially like come up here and be like a normal piece of trim and the wall won't be sitting on top of it. So that's what we're dealing with. So we do have to come in and rip out these baseboards and then we're gonna be putting two one befores this way and that way it will even everything out and we can just put our chair rail up here. We will have to go in and take out all of the baseboard all along here and we're gonna do it that way if because if you remember, I spent hours and hours peeling all of the paint. I know you can't see over here, but peeling all the paint off of these boards just so that I could reuse them. And I'm not about to go spend another $300 on boards just so that we can put all new up that runs to the floor. So what we're gonna do is just kind of like hide the mistake and put a one before vertically and then put the baseboard on top so that it matches and it doesn't interfere with the new floor that we're gonna here. I know it's gonna be really hard to tell, but right here, if you remember, this is where our plumbing was. And my dad made the comment that it'll be like five or 10 years before it starts leaking. And we just didn't even really think of that because we had the access right there to the main shutoff valve, but that is, so if you're upstairs in the closet, all you have to do is go in the closet and we, there's like a, like a cutout in the floor. We're gonna put a door there, like a small like little hatch door so that we can get to the main shutoff of the valve, planned it out like pretty like methodically. Like we put out, these boards are really short so that we can just like a multi-tool in there and just cut along and we'll actually end up cutting the bead off if we ever have to do this and then just re-securing them because that's how they've done the floors in our house whenever they've had to do like patchwork or get to the electric. They've cut the bead off and then just pried the boards off that way. So that is what we're gonna do if we ever need to. So we kind of did it to where these boards break. So these boards through here break exactly where the plumbing is. So if that's ever an issue, we can easily access now it. Now finished staining this side of the door. The other side is already stained. So now all I need to do is seal it because I'm debating on whether I should lighten the door a little bit. Whenever it dries before I seal it with anything, I'm gonna carry it in the kitchen and put it next to those beams. That way I can see what it'll look like with the floor. These white specks, this side of the door is much worse than the other side. There's really nothing I can do about that. I am gonna go in with wood filler and I'll hit them with stain and maybe it might help get rid of some of them. I'm really not sure, but I've picked out all the paint that I can and the rest of it is just so deep in there that I cannot get it out, but it shows. So the other side will hopefully be in, on the inside of the kitchen and then this will be on the outside. So this will be like facing the mud room, if that makes sense. But I am gonna go back and see if I can put stainable wood filler in these and stain over them, but I'm, I need to really go and see if I can pick any more out before I do that. But and that's gonna be it for today's vlog. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys will like and subscribe.